What's up, my Carcamaniacs? My name is Carcamo, the Forger of Pain! And I'm about to start a review about Dragon Ball Super Broly, baby! I'm a big anime fan, so I can't wait. Let's do this right now! Like the name of the movie says, this story is about Broly's origin. But we learn so much more than that. A lot is explored and expands the Dragon Ball lore like the Scouter origin, the real reason Goku was sent to Earth, and other curiosities about the planet Vegeta and the Saiyan race. A couple of important things to mention in the planet Vegeta is that they were female Saiyans. Yeah, I know, right? In the series, you never saw them. I mean, did you ever wonder how the heck those Saiyans procreate? Well, at least I did. There are some beautiful scenes with Goku's father, Bardock, and his wife. It shows a tender side of the Saiyans, something not very common in those warriors. Before getting into Broly, it's important to mention that in the first Broly movie, his motivation was uh, really Dragon Ball Z, but ridiculous and not in a cool way. He was born next to Goku and they were on their little cribs and stuff like that, and Goku wouldn't shut up and he would keep crying and crying and crying crying and Broly hated him for that so when he grew up he wanted to kill Goku because Goku didn't let him sleep I guess so yeah that's the motivation right there thank God uh, they really and I'm being serious about this they really fleshed out Broly's character now Broly has a decent backstory you can identify, it's understandable, and you can sympathize with the character. His arc is a little predictable, but it doesn't detriment the movie. The movie is filled with callbacks, and this is the strong and weak point of the movie. You have to go in with a great knowledge of the Dragon Ball anime and previous canon movies to get into this one. You know, remember the name of this? Dragon Ball, and they were looking for the Dragon Balls, duh. I mean, Freezer, he wants the Dragon Balls, he has a wish in mind, and trust me when I tell you, his wish is one of the most ridiculous, yet awesome wishes that a person in this series could want. And uh, I, I, at some point of the movie, I'll be like, please, don't waste this opportunity. Please let this happen. Uh, no, I gotta mention, Paragus keeps this little control for the electric collar thingy in a fanny pack. And let me let me go a little back. When he was at the planet, at this, you know, really desolated planet, he had an orange fanny pack. They went to the ship and Freezer, uh, they, you know, they got new clothes, clothing. And uh, so he had another fanny pack and it was a gray fanny pack. Like, he didn't want to lose his, you know, his style, I guess. It's better than the Rock's fanny pack, at least. This title is everything you expect of Dragon Ball, but with steroids. With jokes and motivations very Dragon Ball-y like I mentioned earlier. The animation is on point and it's the best animation I have ever seen in Dragon Ball, including the best fighting sequences ever, period. I love how the combat is long and fast paced. You can understand everything that's happening on the screen. <clears throat> By the way, this reminds me, after 30 minutes of story, not that this bothered me by any means, they started fighting and I think they went a little overboard. It was maybe 40 to 50 minutes, give or take, of straight combat. And it was <sighs> exhausting. It came to a point when I was like, please, Somebody die already! The movie sadly has some pacing issues. I also have to mention, Goku and Vegeta, they were in this, uh, I don't know, they were like in the North Pole or something. And um, they had like their, 
they're cold outfits. But it was most like, I don't know, they look like the gangsta rap Goku. Yo, shouting in respect at all of Van Eskier and crew. You'll see there's a, I don't know if you guys use Instagram or Facebook, there's like some Adidas um, publicity when you see like Goku and Vegeta like, hey man, using that clothes wear. It, it looks kind of like that. And uh, yeah, it's, I mean, at least for me, it's kind of out of place. Vegeta versus Broly. It's amazing. Now remember... I mentioned that Vegeta had this gangsta green outfit and I was like, oh my God, please don't tell me he's going to fight in that outfit the whole time. Thank God he didn't. Then he, he, he took that shit and he threw it away. The voice acting, as always, was impeccable. Another thing, Broly didn't talk that much, but he sure made up for that by screaming. And screaming, screaming, screaming. Cállate, idiota! So, and um, Broly, he took Goku like Hulk, and he went like this, and he was kicking Goku's ass at some point, and Goku was screaming beyond belief, but it was, it was really annoying. I'm not kidding, and I'm not, I'm not trying to bash this movie, but for real. Um, then the camera did this obnoxious extreme close-up as Goku as Goku was screaming like. The movie only needed to take it down a notch. Don't get me wrong, this is by far the best Dragon Ball movie of all time. Something that this movie rectified, and I'm pretty freaking happy about it, is that uh, Vegeta, the Vegeta character, in the past Broly film, in the first one that is non-canon, thank Jesus, uh, Vegeta, he sees Broly and he gets in his knees, he starts crying and he's like, oh my God, we're doomed, it's the end. And that's not Vegeta. Vegeta, I know he's a warrior, he's pride and full of tradition and he could be sometimes capricious, but Vegeta is not a coward. I mean, he knows when he's facing an opponent that's stronger than him and he might even be a little intimidated, but he's not a coward and that uh, this movie rectified. Even when Broly is besting Vegeta, Vegeta still, uh, he's still, you know, he's there and he's, he's um, he plans his strategy accordingly to what's happening. Even in a part where he tells Goku like, hey, we can't beat him together, we should do it. No, we can't beat him alone, we should do it together. And then it becomes a handicap match. And uh, I use the word handicap very loosely because we're talking about Broly here. Now, the soundtrack was half good and half bad. Let me explain. Since the beginning of the story, it was excellent and memorable, especially on those sweet and tender moments that I mentioned earlier. When the action started, same, no complaints, no problemo. But I don't know if they changed the music director mid-movie development because the music takes a 180 degree turn and it's a mixed bag. Um, kind of an African chance and electronic music. Look guys, trust me, it just doesn't match very well. When Broly starts kicking ass, the Santra goes like, go Broly, go, go Broly, go. And it reminded me of Vanilla Ice on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Secret of the Ooze in the 90s, but worse. A weird thing that happened when Broly gets Super Saiyan. You know, you remember when Broly gets Super Saiyan, we always see that he has like the white eyes without any pupils. Like we needed some explanation for that. So when he turns, you can see his pupil like burst. Like literally it explodes and so that's why he has a white eye. That's really a weird thing to include in the movie, but thanks, I guess. I know what you're wondering. Do I recommend this movie? Totally! It gets an 8 out of 10 in my book. I have a really special announcement. I have been honored by having one line in the movie Dragon Ball Super Broly. Well, the Latin dub at least. But still, I am general number one. It's a small part, but a big step for me. I want to thank 20th Century Fox and Toy Animations for choosing me for this project. And of course, I can't forget of all you Carcumaniacs for
for always supporting the Forger of Pain in all my endeavors. After the movie is over, I don't know if Western audiences will get at least in the credits the Latin dub, but still, you know, stay after credits like Marvel. As always, I can't thank you enough, and of course, my people in my country, Panama. And I really like this movie. I saw it in Spanish with the, of course, my beautiful voice of the general number one, Karkimo the Forger of Pain, and of course, I saw it in Japanese, both in the same day, and I really loved it. Now, I gotta admit, the jokes don't work as well in Japanese, but hey, I grew up, the first time I watched Dragon Ball in Panama was in Japanese. We wanted, I would, actually, it was one, the first rolling movie, and I think it comes full circle. So yes, that's it. Thank you for watching, guys. Share with me everything you think in the comments, and as always, this is Karakomo Gaming. Like or die. Amigos de Cárcamo Gaming, les saluda Vegeta, soy el príncipe de todos los Saiyajines ¿Y saben qué? Me parece que todos son unos insectos Pero vean Cárcamo.com Adiós insectos Y si no lo están viendo, ¡cállate idiota! Así que si no se han dado cuenta, la motivación principal del papá de Broly llamado Paragus Es vengarse del rey Vegeta Él no tiene idea que el planeta... Chucha.